Right now it is time to bring in the frickin' frack of Nick and Knack, Tim Luke and Greg Strom, the appraisal guys, with Appraise This. Of course, you can find them on the web at tqag.com. And right here on a Tuesday morning on Robin Hood Radio. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Well, I'm going to ruin your day right off the bat. <laughs> okay, bring it on. <laughs> here we go. My uh, first story that we'll go to is why a $30 million CryptoPunks auction fell apart at the last minute. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought we just I was must... not expecting that. On... <laughs> I honestly was not expecting we, we that. We might as well just get this out of the way right away. Uh, the seller simply decided to hold. This was a Sotheby's uh, thing that they put together. Um, anyways... They, they described it as punk it. Uh, 104 crypto punks sold uh, in this all or nothing bundle. They estimated the bundle would go for 20 to 30 million dollars on par with a series of paintings uh, that uh, are, are, are much more uh, what we all understand. Um, uh, and I guess the party atmosphere in crypto, whether it's cryptocurrency or NFTs, I guess Willie Nelson could sing The Party's Over. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, the thing is... Um, they actually held this party, by the way. They were, and, oh, yeah. and and 10 or 15 or 20 minutes into the party, things fell apart. They were, they were partying. They were having a great time and everything. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, I, this is... Well, there again, this is something that I, I don't understand the difference between. is because... Uh, it was like like these uh, little. They, they look like, I guess, paintings or little little things <laughs> that uh, miniature things. But I didn't realize that they they uh, that's what the crypto is. Huh. I I thought those were. I see. I guess I don't understand the difference between. Uh, cryptocurrency and crypto um, uh, um, NFTs or whatever they they're called. I didn't. I don't know if an NFT is actually well, it's, uh, di- it's the di- thing it's, itself it's, or it's, is it's, the money. It's digital. It's no, digital. It's That's thing. what it's. It's digital, just like the currency. It's digital. Uh, and right, the currency yeah. is the cryptocurrency. Yeah. The art is the NFT yeah. that is created. That is a non fungible token so it's a oh God, representation it of <laughs> i know no but it's a representation of the artwork so think of it as you know the digital photo in your camera that's basically an nft so if once you take that photo that's what was being sold was a block of all of these different photos and it was right during the party <laughs> that this is uh, this is what gets me is that you know, you, know, you throw those parties and anything can happen. I mean, you know, things can be pulled at the last minute, but then to have the consigner get cold feet and say, oh, no, okay, no, never mind. <laughs> We're not going to sell. We're not going live. So it had been publicized. It had been out there. And then, um, then it wasn't. And they decided to stop the auction. And I think that a lot of it also has to come down to the entire trajectory of the NFT market right. over the last uh, 12 to 18 months has been a downward trajectory. And it's, you know, these, it, it goes back, back to Beanie Babies. It's like, it was a big hype. Everybody was talking about it. Uh, and now what people thought were rare or should be jumping in and grabbing, it's not really holding its value. Yeah, it's 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 like the it's like the cryptocurrency market itself. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, you're you're looking uh, you're looking at, uh, at 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 Bitcoin, which was at one point seventy thousand dollars, and now it's uh, trading somewhere around twenty three thousand um, dollars. Right. You know, it, it's just a, the general decline, and I think it's and I think that rubs off on the NFT market. I really do. I just think that that, that there's a general now beware attitude out there. It's almost like uh, okay, people. It's not. I'm, it's not a Ponzi scheme, okay? But it's almost like when people find out that something has been a Ponzi scheme, and if if you're late, if you're last in, you're first out. You know what I mean? Yeah, correct, correct. But whenever you have anything like that in a marketplace where there is, uh, you know, first it's a downward trend, but then there's this 
uh, negative, something that goes on in the marketplace. One thing that I think of immediately is the ivory market is that it used to sell for such, you know, so much money, but because of the ban and whether and the ban is on elephant ivory, but it has affected the entire ivory market because people, if you don't know the difference or uh, the ban has taken place so that you cannot sell it publicly or it can't be uh, shipped between states or even international. There's so many restrictions. People just say, ah, you know what? No. And the market goes down. There's a big abundance of it, but the desirability goes down. And so that brings it down. And I think we're seeing the same thing with what's going on with these NFTs is more, there's also an abundance of artists that are trying to jump on this boat or on this train. It's a, it's a freight train, fast moving, you know, high speed train. It's going, they're trying to jump on. And the reality is, is that not a lot of people are also uh, looking for a ticket. <laughs> well, I guess what I really <clears throat> am just uh, not understanding is um, – uh, in the article, it's, it talks about um, the uh, this a uh, crypto billionaire. I, I, I still can't figure out how you become a crypt, you know, a billionaire for something that isn't real. And then, but um, l- last year, uh, using his crypto wealth, he bought seventy eight million dollars. Uh, on uh, of art now, that's a real thing. I mean, the art is is real, but they paid for it with something that isn't real. I well, just Greg, don't understand real. it. Okay, Greg, stop that. It is real. It's just like any other coin or any other currency. So you have to get that into your head that it is a currency. It it's there, and that's what Marshall was saying right. is that it's trading at certain levels and it's doing this. The currency is there, and so he amassed a lot of this particular currency. That's all it is. He, if see, marbles had mo- it were worth money, he just Greg, got a bunch of marbles. Yeah, Greg, look, 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 look at this as, as, even like I said, I'm not saying this is a Ponzi scheme, okay, because I'm not. Right. But I'm saying, look at it, it's a Ponzi scheme. If you get in it early on a Ponzi scheme and you you turn that scheme into making a lot of money, you then take that money and invest it in something that has long-term assets like art. It's it's just like a Ponzi scheme because there's no regulation on NFTs. There's no regulation on cryptocurrency. So, you know, you, if you get in early and you make your money and you sell and you take that money, it's 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 almost like, you know, mafia making money, uh, cleaning it through, through banks. Really. Right. That's the way you have and to look this, at it. Right. right. So, <laughs> Marshall, yes. You did make my day. <laughs> there you go. Well, but also for this auction, I think that they, during the party, I'm sure, Sotheby's whispered in the consigner's ear just saying, or the consigner asked to Sotheby's, like, what is the interest and how are we looking? Because this was set up to be like one of Sotheby's biggest achievements in selling this this level at this level of NFT. And basically, the... Uh, Sotheby's had to tell the collector that there was very little interest, that we didn't track, you know, that attract enough bidders, and probably said, well, we may get there, but we never know, and he didn't want to take the risk, and that's why I pulled the plug, because then, and we know what that happens, is when pieces pass at auction, it also gives it a, when, it, when pieces don't sell at auction, it also gives it that stigma as well. Yeah. Well, I just, uh, here's a question then, if, if they if if the consigner canceled the, the auction at the last minute, like <laughs> during the party, um, I, I wonder how if there's a penalty for that because of well, the, there may and it depend on whatever their um, whatever their agreement was, but you know you can't <laughs> Sotheby sunk a whole lot of money into promoting and putting a party together and doing all of these things, so I'm sure. Or that there was some sort of, uh, you know, here's the question: Was it in cryptocurrency, or was that was going to be my that was going to be my next question? I know you enough. <laughs> oh, that's why I brought that up. <laughs> Always go from cryptocurrency and uh, NFTs to something that makes a little more sense: a rare 1679 violin of Stradivarius. Okay, 
uh, is uh, going up to bid next month, and that could fetch up to $11 million. That is an investment yeah. that if you have the money to make, uh, and you will, will yield tons of money for your family in the future. <laughs> really. Right. Well, and here's the difference is – we're talking about something that has that not only age, rarity, and desirability, but also there's a small, very small number that are available in the marketplace, and they're all tracked. Everybody knows where these pieces are. So when one comes up and they know the provenance in the background, that's why they sell for so much money. Is that no? You're not going to find one in you know in in your basement. Is that they they have all surfaced and uh, they've been tracked. So very different from these NFTs or things that uh, are just mass quantities or nobody knows how many quantities. This there's a specific number that is known that is out there. They track it and they know where where the sales you know when the sales take place. So this will be exciting to watch. It will be. Um, apparently, there's only ten known, um, and this is one of the ten. And um, the, if you stop and think about it, when was the last time we ever talked? We talked about a Stradivarius coming up for auction. Man, I mean, they're so rare uh, of, at this level that I think that's why it's going to generate a lot of interest. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it's uh, it's it, it's going to be then this will really really be fun to watch because uh, uh, and I I'm sure we're going to be able to watch it in real time so that'll be kind of that's that's the other thing that'll be fun to do is to watch it in real time. You know it's it's interesting I sit here and uh, the name Stradivarius to me ever since I was a kid to me meant something special I wonder how many people out there have no idea what a Stradivarius is nowadays oh, oh well uh, let me tell you something I think there are more people than you think because um, in, in the early part of the 20th century Sears uh, used the name to sell a violin for the mass uh, the masses the masses yeah. And you could buy them through Sears, and it would. Of course, it wasn't a, a real Stradivarius. But I don't know how. I, I don't remember how they ended up using the name, but they were allowed to use the name. And now, every do you know how many air quotes Stradivarius that Tim and I have seen at appraisal events or well, no, in Greg, states? Greg, they they used the the. It was in Italian, and it said "made in the style made of." In the style, yeah. <laughs> So, so, so people just when they hear the name Stradivarius, they realize that this is something. It it should be something special, but not every you know. If there's, let's just take this for example. Only ten of these violas known, uh, then the the uh, one that you have in your attic that you got from your grandfather is probably not worth very much. It's probably the one from Sears. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, well, we'll go uh, once again. Uh, see, we're on a roller coaster of, uh, of stories here this morning. The LeBron James triple logman trading card, which, by the way, I'm looking at a picture of, and it's pretty cool. That now is expected to set a, a record at an auction, which is coming up. Uh, and that auction, I think, is going on this week. It's a, um, it's a one of one. That's it. That's it. It's completely unique, and they think it could... Now, really, because it's a one of one, which we were just basically talking about ten, but it could it, this could because it's a one of one, um, uh, set a new record in trading cards. Wow, it's uh, that is that the one? I don't know. I think I saw that on um, on live auctioneers. Actually, I was in my, one of my notifications. It's a, it's, I, a, it's, a it's, that, it's a card that uses patches from each one of his NBA teams that he played for. Cleveland, Miami, and the Lakers. And right. opening bidding starts at $500,000. But they think because it is just one, there are no other ones like this, that it could go as high as 6 to $7 million. Yeah. And that, once, yeah. Once, once again, that goes back to what you were saying, Tim and Greg, that when you have something, well, first of all, it has the providence of being LeBron James, but it's one right. of one. I mean, that's what makes a huge difference. 
I don't know of any other sport card that's one of one. Honestly, I, I don't think I've ever heard of one that, that is just one of one before i mean we you know we we've, we've talked about honus we've t- talked about the honus wagner card all the time and we talk about uh mickey mantle uh, rookie cards but there's always more of them i i i don't think i've ever i don't ever recall uh hearing about uh, just a one of one and um that'll it certainly <laughs> will be interesting to see how that what, how that shakes out T- tim did you see how this card was discovered this card was no. discovered during a live online event hosted by Whatnot, okay? That's a oh. live streaming marketplace where people can buy and sell and trade collectibles. That's And it happened in May. So now we're looking at May. and The person, when it was discovered, well, right away, someone's turning around and saying, you know what? I'm going after the big bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's... That's amazing, and it looks like it is being sold by uh, Golden Auctions, and you know they have the expectation uh, between three and five million, and they also said, it, but it could come close to the Honus Wagner, you know, which we've talked about before, which I didn't realize it must have sold again for six point six million. So, uh, it, it these trading cards, and again, it goes back to what you were saying. It's that rarity. It's that one of one, but it's these. It's the patches that he wore. It's it's from him. It was also graded, so it also has um, has everything as you know. It's graded as flawless, so it was probably from the minute they had it, put it right into the protective um, encasing. So it has all the elements to do really well. So it'll be interesting to see what what this sells for. I haven't seen who it belonged to. I mean, where did it come from? There's 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 no name about that. There's no there's no mention of the name. I I tried to to to, yeah. to look it down. It it just mentions that it was found on one of these just regular live auction sites and and whoever well, got it, whoever got it, got it. Well, yeah, it does it does say that the card currently belongs to three whatnot users who purchased a stake in the pull to have to have opted to auction it off. And so it'll be interesting to see what that how that all shakes out. I don't know. Interesting because that's all that's a similar s- story to um, the, the Honus Wagner card. How how it? I mean, slightly different, but I mean that you know it 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 um, it ended up um, just belonging to a, a woman who used to work at the post office i think uh, but uh it, it it just it's interesting that that's it's kind of a similar situation where they um are putting this up uh, it belonged to a like a consortium i guess well, even though it's only right. 3p but uh um God, that's going to be <laughs> that's another one that's going to be interesting to find out because you know it, I don't know how many um, other uh, sports figures are as really as famous as as he is. So um, I, I think that that's going to be if it if it does sell for seven million dollars, what's it going to sell for in the future if it sells? I mean that's that uh, it's that's very very interesting to to see so right. and and in york pennsylvania there was a star wars auction and a bubba fat rocket firing prototype <laughs> sold for two hundred and thirty six thousand dollars now this is amazing because uh really uh it's it's just a prototype uh uh in it set a new record uh, for uh, for 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 things like this. I mean, that's you know that's that's amazing. I mean, Boba Fett is not really a a huge main character in Star Wars. You know that's 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 the funny thing about it. It's come back now, okay. Right. But uh, still, right. it's it's basically nothing more than a toy. <laughs> it's nothing well, more. Well, it's than... also yes, but it's limited because of it being a prototype. And it's those prototype um, pieces that also are desirable. And 
but look what's going on with the whole Star Wars franchise. And there's just something that just, there was a new series that just kicked off uh, on streaming, one of the streaming platforms. And uh, collectors are looking for the rare pieces. Well, you know, you know Disney Disney was smart. They bought uh, they bought uh, the Star Wars uh, Enterprise, and they put it up on Disney Plus. And they now have a million prequel stories that they're running. And what right. they do, what they do, what's interesting, and I'm I'm waiting for these to hit the market. At the beginning and end of each one of these prequel shows, they show uh, poster boards of 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 you know when they design you know when you, when they put the story together. They've got all these different poster boards, and I would oh, be I, I would be willing to bet you that sooner or later, all these poster boards are going to go out for auction as well. Right. Which 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 depict what they want the story to look like. Uh, you know, I, I've I've been I've been watching this stuff, and I say, you know, there's got to be a reason they have all these poster boards that they show at the be at they show it really more at the end of the sh- of the shows than the beginning. But they're obviously they're all obviously drawings, and they're obviously if the show's successful, and it's attached to Star Wars, they're gonna they're gonna be worth money in the future. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, did you ever think that uh, what was it, nineteen seventy six when or seventy six or seventy seven when Star Wars came out? Did you ever think that <laughs> all these many years later, <laughs> it would be such a huge um, collectible area. I mean, it's just like every, certain characters just continue to uh, um, amaze me that they are, are so popular and that they, every time a new movie comes out, and we've talked about this in the past, where uh, anytime there's a, a new movie that comes out, some, there's always a sale or something around uh, the release of the movie and it's almost as though they make the movie because they know they're going to make a fortune on the car- the uh, the collectible toys afterward the merch as they call it well you, you're so, asking you're asking the wrong person because as a kid uh, I was I was a big uh, Marvel comic consumer okay uh, fantastic for everything but also um, uh, they had a lo- a lot of other interesting uh, interesting comic books that they came out with that weren't superheroes, but they were uh, like the boys are on 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 streaming now, uh, anti superheroes where there there's there's always a backstory uh, uh, about what goes on, and I I had all those I had all those comic books every one of them uh, because I was a big Marvel fan, and I I, I see now every, what, what Marvel has done. Uh, if you've got any of those original uh, comic books. Uh, from back then, uh, you're sitting pretty. You know, you're, you're sitting pretty if they're if they're in good shape. Yeah, uh, I, I was. What did you do with yours? I have no idea. <laughs> That's the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying you asked. You, you mentioned this is the wrong person. I have no idea what I did with them. And the funny uh, thing is, is when when Marvel came out and started making movies about all these things. That's when I said to myself. Damn, you did it again, you idiot! <laughs> Where are all those things? And I mean, I had boxes full of Marvel comics. You know, as a kid, you would read them once or twice, and 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 and, and that was it. Oh well, that's the way. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> my, my potential, my my possible potential flirting with being a, a billionaire was was thwarted in the early stages. <laughs> Yeah, because of people like you that threw things away, that's why we have a job today. No, wait a so second. I, d- I so didn't throw you. them away. I put them in my drawer and put them away. My mother and my grandmother threw them all away. I didn't throw that, them away. That's exactly why we thanks thank you know thanks to the mothers and grandmothers of this country. That's why we have a career. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> all right. So you guys, are you busy next week, Tim? Uh, traveling. I'm, yes, well, this week I'm in Chicago, so I'm uh, at Hindman Auctions. I'm at the mothership, as they say, uh, the headquarters, and I have meetings with uh, a number of my colleagues and some clients and getting my whole team together. So we try to do a check-in every six months so that we say, okay, what do we need to, what do we need to address, what's happening, what, what are the next six months hold? And then next week I will be in Cincinnati. And uh, we just 
opened, Heinemann just opened a new building and a new space in Cincinnati. So that's really great. And I have a new team member that is starting. Uh, her name is Heather. And she's here in Chicago now. And then next week we will have meetings and uh, just a number of different things around the Cincinnati. You don't want to know what I'm so, going to yeah, be doing next stops. week. You don't want to know what I'm dealing with while I'm home here. I mean, but I'll tell you anyway, we had a flood. <laughs> so we we're, we're in the mid, we just finished doing some renovations and now we have to do the we have to take up the entire floor because we had a uh, a flood at, with the uh, with our uh, air conditioner. So I'm dealing with contractors and estimates and uh, uh, picking out new. Uh, so I, it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm semi-retired, but I'm busier now than I was before. So that's right. my, that's my, my life lately. Now so. in, your, in your spare time next week, I want you guys to look up <clears throat> what of, what, a, what an original copy of the comic book, the Watchmen would go for. And, and let me know next week uh, an original copy of The Watchmen, and let me know because I had one of those. Uh, oh, oh, okay. so you, so so you want us to we want you want us to burst your bubble again? Huh? No, just let me know how much I could have. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not going to be. I've got a feeling it's going to be worth a lot though. But uh, just if you can find it, let me know what the value uh, if, if you had a copy of Is one of those. Is that number one? Uh, yes, yes, yep, number one. And that wasn't. I didn't get that new. I got it from uh, somebody who knew I liked uh, uh, Marvel and, and 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 the Watchmen. But it's yes, number one, number one. It ah, was a, okay. Yeah. That was back in the early fifties when I got that. Oh, good. That gives me something to research this week. I'm I'm excited. All right, guys. We'll speak to you next week. Have a great week. <laughs> Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, Tim Luke and Greg Strom, the appraisal guys, the frickin' frack of Nick and Knack. You can find them at tqag.com on the web and also at robinhoodradio.com. Click on on demand. Click on the appraisal guys.